The main Windows API function I want to use for my window manager is called set windows hook ex. And this basically enables me to install a hook on a lot of applications running on the same desktop. And I'll get events about all kinds of interesting stuff that happens. I'm specifically interested in windows that are created and destroyed because I want to rearrange all the windows each time a window is created or destroyed. So I'm going to use specific options on this function to actually implement this. So here we can see the parameters of this function. Let's start just writing it. But before I'm going to actually include windows.h. This will give me access to a lot of Windows API functions. Now I'm going to start the main function. And let's start by calling this function. First parameter is going to be the type of the hook. You can see that this actually supports a lot of different types. I'm specifically interested in wh shell. You can see how this installs a hook procedure that receives notifications useful to shell applications. But if we just take a look at actually take a look at the hook procedure by clicking on this link, we can see that the options of the events that this can actually get, we can actually get events for windows that are created and windows that are destroyed. And this is what we're actually interested in. So this is the type I'm going to use, wh shell. The second parameter is the actual pointer to the hook procedure. This is the function that implements how I'm going to handle all these events. And you can see that if the thread ID, which I'm going to specify later, is zero, we actually need this to come from a separate DLL. So I'm going to actually open another source file here, and that's going to be the DLL. We're going to call it wmdll.c. I'm going to include here windows.h as well. And this will just have a single function that I'm going to export. And for this, I actually have the documentation for exporting from a DLL. We have basically two main options for exporting stuff. Either we create a module definition file, or we just use this keyword that is DLL export with decal spec. I'm just going to use this option. This is pretty simple. Just before writing the definition of the function, I'm going to proceed it with decal spec and then DLL export. To take a look at how we actually need to define the hook procedure, I'm going to go back here to the documentation that we opened earlier about the shell procedure function. And we can see here how the signature of the function looks like and the parameters that it gets. So let's just start writing this in the DLL. Now let's go ahead and check what code was actually passed into this function so we can know if we actually need to handle an event of a window that was created or destroyed. I'm going to add an if statement for the code. And we can see that the parameter can be one of these values. I'm going to check if it's window created or the code is window destroyed. In that case, I also want to rearrange all the windows. If the code is one of these, I want to actually go ahead and call the function tile windows. And you can see that this basically tiles the windows of the specified parent window. But what's cool is if you actually pass in null for the parent, the parent will actually be the desktop window. And this is what we're going to do to arrange all the windows on the desktop. Second parameter is how to tile the windows. I'm going to tile them vertically. Afterwards, we have a optional parameter that specifies a specific rectangle area to arrange the windows on. If you pass in null, it's just going to be the whole area of the parent window. So I'm going to just pass in null. Afterwards, we have an optional parameter of kids. And this enables us to specify specific windows we want to arrange. I'm just going to use null for this. I want to arrange all the windows. And also for this, this is the actual array of the handles to the child windows to arrange. If you pass in null, all the child windows are going to be arranged. Later, I'm going to show you another important thing you need to do on this function. But for now on, I'm going to move back to the main code. And we're going to just finish off what we started over here. And we need to get access to this function from the main code. So for this, we need to actually load the DLL. To load the DLL, I'm going to use the load library function. Two points before I continue on. 
First one is going to be that this code is not going to be ready for production. It's going to be just for fun. I'm going to skip important stuff like I'm not going to do error checking and also I'm not going to clean up resources except cleaning up the hook, which is very important. And second one is notice I'm going to use the W versions of the functions on this code and not the ASCII versions. W actually stands for Y character. And it's a better practice to use W versions of functions on the Windows API because this actually helps you better support international languages. Let's open up the documentation for load library W. You can see how this basically loads a specified module into the address space of the calling process. So this will help us load the DLL into the process. This gets a single parameter, which will be the name of the DLL. I'm just going to specify WMDLL. And if the function succeeds, it will return an actual handle to the module. As you can see right over here. After calling load library, I'm going to use another function called get proc address. This function is useful to actually get the specific address of the function I want. Specifically, I want to get the address of shell procedure. First parameter is going to be the handle to the module. We'll just pass in this. Second parameter is going to be the name of the function I want to get. This function is going to be shell procedure, as is written over here. Afterwards, if everything is successful, this will have the pointer for this function. And now I can go back to the documentation of set windows hook exw. Now let's scroll to the parameter of LPFN, the second parameter. As we saw before, this needs to be a pointer to the hook procedure. Now we have it, so I'm just going to pass it here. Shell procedure. Now let's move on to the next parameter. This will be the handle to the DLL containing the hook procedure. This is easy. We loaded the DLL here, so I'm just going to pass it over here. Final parameter is going to be the thread ID. You can see that if the parameter is zero, the hook procedure is associated with all existing threads running on the same desktop. This is what we want, so we'll just pass in zero for this. Now let's take a look at the return value. If the function succeeds, the return value is the handle to the hook procedure. I'm going to save this into a global variable, so I'm going to make a global variable right over here. After calling this function, I'm going to make an infinite loop to keep the program running. Now I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the remarks section over here. And I'm going to focus on two main things. First of all, you can see that calling the call next hook ex function. You can see that first of all, we need to call call next hook ex function. You can see that it's optional, but it's highly recommended. So let's do this. I'm going to open up the documentation for this function. You can see that this passes the hook information to the next hook procedure in the current hooks chain. So th this actually needs to come from the shell procedure. And we're going to actually make this on the return. So I'm going to return. And then I'm going to pass in the call for this. You can see that this returns an L result, like what this function returns. First parameter is optional, and you can see that it's ignored. So I'm just going to pass in null for this. Afterwards, the parameters are code, wparam, and lparam, exactly like over here. So I can just pass them on. Now let's go back here to the documentation of this function. And we can see that after it talks about call next hook function, it's also saying that before terminating, an application must call the unhook windows hook function. So let's take a look at this documentation. And you can see that it just gets the handle for the hook. And for this, I'm going to actually handle the control C event because you see that I have an infinite loop here. So I want some way to actually get to the cleanup of the hook. And for this, I'm going to actually open up the documentation of the C language, the C library, and I'm going to use the function signal. And this comes from signal.h. So let's add this header file. And before entering the infinite loop, I'm going to call signal. This actually enables us to specify a custom error handler. And I'm going to specifically handle 
sig int. If we take a look at the documentation, if I click here, we can see that sig int is an external interrupt, usually initiated by the user. This will actually be the signal that happens when you press control C. So I'm gonna handle this. So the first parameter here is gonna be sig int. This is a signal to set the signal handle to. And the second parameter is gonna be the actual handler. And we see that we can pass a pointer to a function and the signature must be this. So let's implement this function. What this function is gonna do, it's gonna first clean up the hook. So I'm gonna call this function with the hook handle. Finally, it's gonna exit the program. And for this, I can use the exit function from the C library. This comes from scdlib.h, so let's add this include. I'm gonna just exit with the zero exit code. Now I can go back to the call of the signal function and I'm gonna pass in the function that I just created to handle control C. That's it for the code. So I'm gonna save everything with the wa command. Now let's go ahead and build both of these. For this, I'm gonna use the Visual Studio build tools. Specifically, I'm gonna use the native tools command prompt for Visual Studio 2022. Let's navigate to the folder with my code. I'm gonna start by building the main executable. I'm gonna use CL, which is the Visual Studio compiler. I'm gonna specify the C file. And also I'm gonna specify user32.lib. Reason I'm specifying user32 here is because if you take a look, for example, at one of the functions that I'm using from the Windows API, and you take a look at the section that talks about the requirements, you can see that these come from user32.lib. So you need to specify them to the linker so the linker knows where to actually find these functions. We have a little problem here. I'm just gonna fix it real quick. Because I used load library W, I need to actually specify that this is a wide character string by preceding the string with L. This means that the characters on the string will be wide character. Now let's go ahead and compile this again. I'm gonna run CL on the C file with user32.lib. After compiling the main executable, I have a single warning here talking about the function that comes from the DLL. But this will still work fine, so I'm just gonna ignore this warning for now. Afterwards, I'm gonna actually build the DLL. For this, I'm gonna use again CL, but this time with the slash C flag, which means compile only, because I want to link separately. I'm gonna pass in the C file, wmdll.c. We have here two warnings, but it's still gonna work fine, so I'm just gonna ignore them. Afterwards, I'm gonna actually link the DLL. Notice that CL actually created an object file after it's finished compiling. So I'm gonna pass the object file to the linker. I'm gonna specify here as well user32.lib. Finally, I'm gonna specify slash DLL. Nice, now that it's finished, I'm gonna actually go ahead and run the window manager. For this, I'm just gonna run wn.exe. Now let's go ahead and create a new window, for example, a new file explorer. So I'm gonna click here. As you can see, all the windows are arranged. Now let's go ahead and close this, for example. You can see the windows are now rearranged. Let's open two windows. You can see that everything is rearranged very nicely. Once I press Control C, the window manager will exit nicely and clean the hook. I'm gonna upload this project into GitHub and I'm gonna actually work on improving it. So you're welcome to check it out. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.